Now, one thing that's a little different between measuring technological bias and measuring technological progress, remember, we can measure technical progress as delta TFP equals delta Y minus SL delta L plus SK delta K, right? That was, that was our measure of technological progress. The most common measure was the measure on the quantity side as the growth in output minus the growth in inputs, okay? Now, in order to measure the rate of technological progress, I don't need to know much about the production function other than shares. It's kind of like when we wanted to measure whether people were better off or worse off, all we needed to know was the prices, right? That's really all. It's exactly equivalent to what we started in lecture one, where we can measure whether the consumer was better off or worse off just by looking at changes in quantity to fix prices, right? We can approximate the indifference curve by the budget line. Here, we're approximating the production function by the tangent. Basically, we're approximating the production function. We're assuming each input is being paid as part of the product. For measuring technological progress, it's a little trickier because you have to estimate this parameter sigma. If you don't know what sigma is, you can't get a direct estimate of the level of technological bias. Often you can sign the direction of technological bias, right? Give you an example. Let's say that this is positive, okay, and this is negative. Well, in that case, you would know for sure that delta B would have to be a negative number, right? Because what you're seeing is K is going up relative to L, but W is going down relative to R. That can't happen unless there was technological bias. We know sigma is a positive number, right? So you can often sign. And that's just like when I see, in fact, it's exactly analogous. When I see this point and this point, what can I conclude? I can conclude demand must have shifted, right? I can't be moving along the demand curve if prices and quantities are going in the same direction. That's the same thing that's happening here. If this is positive, that means capital is going up relative to labor, and the price of capital is going up relative to the price of labor, which means that the demand curve has to be shifting, which is what tells us there has to be a buy, right? It's the usual thing. You can't identify the level of the demand shift and the supply shift, but you can often identify the direction when, because of these inequalities, you know that demand is going down. In this case, you know sigma is positive. Okay. People understand that. So identifying technical bias requires an estimate of the elasticity of substitution. <laughs> because you have to net out of the factor of price change, or equivalently the factor of quantity change, what would happen because of substitution. But since you can sign the direction of substitution, namely if W is going up relative to R, you know that if he's substituting away from labor, or if R is going up relative to W, you know that he's substituting away from capital, that allows you to sometimes determine the sign of delta B, or at least put bounds on delta B more generally. <coughs> Any questions that people have, have about it? 